when you are creating your SOPs and when you are communicating your SOPs, it's also very important for you to think through what goes wrong or what other areas are affected if we don't follow this SOP. Attention coaches, consultants, course creators. If you get paid based off your knowledge, I'm going to tell you something very, very important, okay? What if I could teach you how to make extra five to six figures every single month using simple Facebook and Instagram ads, all right? Let me tell you about my boy. He got the paid ad playbook. Listen, this paid ad playbook is gonna give it to you for free, first off. Markwell Russell, one of the most genuine people I've ever met, he's created over $500 million in client revenue using the paid ad playbook strategy, all right? So listen, go to socialproofgift.com or text PROOF to 904 447 Five two seven four. If you want to get fifty to a hundred new client leads every day that actually convert, you need to go to socialproofgift.com or text proof to 904-447-5274. And he's gonna give you a bonus video that helps you with a strategy to customize your particular strategy for your particular business. I right? again socialproofgift.com, text proof to 904-447-5274. Let's get into the episode. Welcome to another edition of the Social Proof Podcast. We are uh, having engaging conversations around entrepreneurship, everything entrepreneurship. Listen, if you are listening to the podcast right now, whose phone was that? Whose phone? Live studio audience stuff. If you're listening to the podcast right now, do yourself a favor, subscribe to the channel. If you're watching on YouTube, hit the little subscribe button. Don't just like be here watching. You know what I mean? It takes one second to support hit the subscribe button and then go to your Spotify or your Apple app and just hit the follow button. If you want to take support to a whole nother level, you can actually rate us five stars, subscribe, stuff like that. So um, we're here. We are Donnie here. Wiggins. Mm-hmm. David what was, Sands. What was the inspiration? Did you get hit with a word this morning? Any inspiration? Did you wake up and like feel inspired in some way? You know, I woke up this morning and honestly, my first thought was, no excuses, mm. Donnie. Just gotcha. own it. There it is. That's that's what started my day today. No excuses, just own it. That's good. That's and we're good. not going to get into why in no, this no, episode. No. We'll, but we'll no excuses, just own it. And that's when it. you own it, it's just over. The excuse just kind of lingers. Owning it just kills the issue right away. So where does that come from? Like, is there some things in your life or some things that go on in, in business or something where you find yourself not owning it? Oh, absolutely. Not in my business necessarily, but I can say like in a relationship, in my relationship. Ask Kenny. <laughs> Why ask Kenny when I'm sitting here spilling my candy in the lobby? Because, because sometimes we don't know that we're not owning. But I just said that I don't own it. Yeah. <laughs> what is so he give, trying to give do? Us one, give us one. Um, I am, I am a nitpicker. Sometimes I'm a nitpicker, right? And I believe that I am, I am justified in much of my nitpicking. Mm. But then there are some times where I could just choose a peaceful day over the nitpicking, mm. right? And so if an argument happens, I have to own that I didn't choose peace that day. Mm. That's hard. Mm-hmm. That's hard. Can we get that round of applause? That yeah. was good. That's good ownership. Um, what about I, you? Uh, I woke up. No, no. Before you tell me that, uh, in what area of your life do you find yourself not owning something? Um, that I'm being a perfectionist and I mask it as getting it done right. Mm. So I, I, just, I just see little things that are like that are off. And sometimes you got to choose whether you bring them up or you just let that person have it. So you don't become the person that's always, you did this wrong, you did that wrong. We have the same issue. (laughs) I'm a nitpicker. (laughs) I'm a nitpicker. Absolutely. It's like, how do you unsee what's clearly wrong? That's true. How do you unsee it? That's true. Yeah. Like, come on, you're going to leave that bottle of water that's full of condensation on the outside just sitting on the velour sofa do you know what that does over time? Can you just move Did that the really bottle happen? of water? It, you, look, you look scarred. 
It has <laughs> happened, and that's, that's something that I kind of got over because mm-hmm. I know how to, you know, move along. But it just, you know, nitpick. How do you unsee what is clearly wrong? And what is the line, do you think, between nitpicking and getting something right? Yeah. There's a line there, right? You can't just, you can't just let things happen. It's almost like um, uh, Myron said something interesting. And he said, um, anything left to itself moves closer and closer towards disorder. Mm-hmm. Meaning, if you leave a garden just to be a garden, the weeds come up. Now, you... You can either be the person that's like, okay, every time I see a weed, I got to pull it up. I got to pull it up. And that's how the garden grows. It stays fresh. Or you could just say, oh, well, that one weed isn't going to kill the garden. Or let's say you are a gardener over the gardener. Mm -hmm. And you see that the person that you're supervising is missing certain spots. Do you keep bringing it up um, Mm -hmm. so that you can get the thing right? Mm Mm-hmm. Or do sometimes you don't bring it up so that you can keep the relationship intact with the person? Yeah, I'm in that season right now. I'm in that season because I don't feel like I nitpick over petty things. Like, I'm not like, you're not doing this right, you're not doing that right. It's actually something that I only complain about something that if this is going to cause a bigger problem in the future, I'm trying to fix it now, right? Um, but then we go into seasons where some days that's more than yeah. not. Um, and I am trying to, I struggle with, do I keep saying something and just let this go? Because it really, it's, it bothers me and it's going to damage something in the future. Or do I just do it myself, fix the, fix the situation myself? Well, I went through that period and it's like, if I just keep fixing it, I'm going to begin to develop resentment toward this thing and it becomes more than nitpicking. Now it's an argument Mm -hmm. or an issue that's just like festering if it's in your business or something, you know, it's just something. And now, like if you have a team member who's constantly overlooking that weed and you let it go that first day and then the next week you come back and your job is to check the field again and they've overlooked now that, that weed and that weed is developed and multiplied into three weeds and then they got it. But then two weeks later, there's another weed and oop, there's one over there and they're doing it again. And you just go behind them and start picking the weeds up. And then you're noticing this frequency, right? You go behind them and you're picking it up. What it does is the person whose job it was to pick that weed, when they come back, they're checking and everything is good. It's not because they're doing what they're supposed to do. It's because you did it to save arguing with them, to to, to avoid a confrontation. And what's going to happen is they're going to keep overlooking these single strands of weeds because it's not a big, obvious strand that's a problem, no, sure. right? And you're going to then resent them and nothing they do going for you're going to start looking for the problem Facts. now i have to go behind you and make sure you close the stables and make sure that you got the holes out of the cornfield or whatever they can now i got to go and start looking at all these details and i don't want to do that yeah not in business not in my relationship not for any reason so do you stop do you stop addressing the issue. Would you do that? Like, would you let your team member continue to have an issue that, you know, overlooking one weed at a time might be fine at first. But if I stop checking behind you and fixing the issue, now we got a field full of weeds and it's going to cost me money. Yeah. Not the team member. That is the, that is the challenge. Like, it, like, what, like, I guess it goes down to, um, uh, picking your battles mm-hmm. and, Anybody got any insight on this real quick? Because um, I don't know if I have the answer necessarily, but does anybody struggle with it? Anybody figure out a balance on how to... Thanks. All right. Or is anybody <laughs> just like, like I'm here. five years later still nitpicking over the same dang on thing? <laughs> yeah, that's a fact. So <laughs> I how need do you, to know if that's normal. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. We might be normal. <laughs> we might so, be normal. So, so talk to me, Ariel. So, um, Introduce yourself, though. Ariel Young underscores me on Instagram. And uh, as it relates to the podcast, um, like editing and things like that, I'm really nitpicky about. And so um, when it comes to noticing things in the production, whether it's marketing, whether it's actual podcast, whether it's anything, I realize I'm a bit nitpicky as well. So what I think I've learned is that in the beginning, when I can be super nitpicky, it can be demoralizing to people who actually get that feedback over and over. And it doesn't improve their 
work, it actually like just makes it worse. Mm. So I took a step back after a few days and I was like, hey, let's give like just blanket <laughs> feedback about everything. And then we'll talk about like improvement in the next couple of days, the next like 30 to 60 days. And it really made our work relationship much better. So like being able to catch things like misspellings and I'm not the most detail oriented person. Mm. So I can't have someone who's also not detail oriented because it didn't, then it's just not going to work. Um, but checking myself and not allowing them to not allowing myself to kind of step on their spirit really help them step to rise to the occasion. Yeah. I, I think one thing we could do also is like you talk about it all the time is uh, SOPs, your standard operating procedures. Mm -hmm. Because now we could, it, it's not, so if I say to Joe, um, <laughs> if I say to Joe, <laughs> every, we have a, we have a podcast that comes out on Monday, right? And the Patreon is supposed, the Patreon for Monday should come out the previous Thursday. Mm -hmm. Right now we didn't, we didn't guarantee that when people signed up for the Patreon, but I, we've been talking about it. it. Now Joe wants to sit down and <laughs> defend himself, right? <laughs> he got right in we front of Listen, right. this is like a segment of the show. Talk to Joe. Okay. So it's supposed to come out on the, like the Monday's episode should come out the previous Thursday as a benefit to the Patreon members. Now, if it comes out on Friday or Saturday, which is two days after, or even Sunday, which is right before everybody else gets it, I would have to say it, right? Joe, I'm like, yo, it's supposed to come out this day. If the SOP or the standard operating procedure says it should come out Thursday, I'm now not mad at the, or I'm not directing my energy to the person. I'm directing my energy to this isn't done. We both understood this was supposed to be done. And then they can take ownership and say, I didn't do what I was supposed to be doing. But a lot of times we don't have the operating procedures or like we we didn't, we might have said it in passing, but it wasn't a standard. Mm -hmm. When certain things are a standard, like if I tell my daughter, you got to wash the dishes every Thursday night. If she washes them Thursday and the next Thursday comes and I don't say anything or the following Thursday comes and I actually just wash the dishes, I can't come back the following Thursday and say, you know, you're supposed to wash on Thursdays, right? Because I don't have a standard. So I think we got to keep pushing the issue of the actual procedure that's supposed to take place mm -hmm. so that they know and hopefully they feel like, all right, I'm not doing my job. Yeah. And yes, please. I would love to hear your perspective on implementing the hire fast, fire fast. Um, Andre, Andre Norman said it one time in the morning meetup and he was like, he doesn't allow the same thing to happen like multiple times. And I think it's also in one of the books he suggested, but when it comes to not taking ownership, like once you've done the SOP and then they, they're still not taking ownership, as a new entrepreneur, I'm like, oh, we just got I'm to a place where we just... Oh, fire people? <laughs> so, oh, yeah. I get anxiety. I get nervous. I start sweating. Like, I, yeah, I, I'm terrible at firing people. Any I'm not. will be helpful. <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> so how many times did Joe have to not? I'm just saying, you're I doing am, a great job, by the way, Joe. I am not terrible at firing people. And it probably comes from my background in corporate America where I had to hire and fire or I would be fired. Right. right? So I had to identify who was a problem on the team and just wasn't going to improve. But I don't believe in hire fast, fire fast, just as the standard. I believe in developing your employee or your team member. And so... When you are in a position where you have to terminate an employee, what I have what I have now understood is that it's not their fault, it's mine. There's something that happened in that process that made me choose the wrong team member, right? I rarely have to fire anybody because I am so careful about how I hire in the first place. I am not, you know, a lot of people will say, I got this role or I need something and I know David is really good at doing X, Y, and Z, right? Um, for example, David had a need in his business and when I asked him, what is it that you clearly need? And he thought it was me. He thought what he was asking for was Donnie to come into that part of his business and I'm like, oh, I don't do these things. This is for like an assistant. <laughs> That's not what I do. He misunderstood it as 
what an operations person does, right? So if he hired me in that role and I came into the organization and I didn't do those tasks, he'd be disappointed because in his mind, he hired someone to do this job when what needed to be done was identify the tasks that need to be done. And then you find the person who's qualified and eager to do those tasks, right? Now, you have to have SOPs and not just SOPs in place, but KPIs. So SOPs, for those of you who are just tuning in, are standard operating procedures. What are the procedures and processes that are the standard? This is how we respond. This is how we react. This is how we execute, fulfill, whatever. But then KPI are your key performance indexes. What are the metrics in which you are basing or judging your team members' performance? So then in the SOP, if your KPI goes beyond this metric X number of times, whether that's X number of days in a row or months in the year, then we understand in the beginning that this will be cause for termination. And we still have to be very careful in masking our standard and our commitment to our standard for nitpicking. You said that you were really nitpicky about the editing process and how you got your finished product, but then you felt like it demoralized them and you backed off. So what is the alternative to settle for a less quality product because now the team feels demoralized? Or do you just take ownership and saying, you know what? I probably didn't pick the right person for this role. Let me get someone and communicate now my standard operating editing procedures. Make sure they can do this role, test them out on it and replace it. Or let me talk to the existing person on my team. Let me identify my pop my procedures in writing and present it to this person who's currently here and say, hey, going forward, this has to happen or it has to happen. How you feel about it can't be inserted into this. This is what's in black and white. So let's go ahead and make an agreement that from this point, if this isn't done, then we understand that that's grounds for termination. And then you don't feel bad about firing because yeah, it's not about you. It's about the SOP. Yeah, absolutely. So, but and I think even as us like self-driven entrepreneurs, it's equally important to have certain SOPs for ourselves because a lot of times we're just going around running and doing stuff, right? Mm -hmm. But there's not like a, there's not a certain standard um, operating procedure that we have for ourselves in terms of setting the KPIs, right? This is what we need to accomplish. Let's say um, your goal is to make $1,000 a week. Well, what is it going to take to make $1,000 a week? These are the things that necess- that have to be done Monday through Friday. Mm-hmm. Let's say 9 a.m., this is, this is the, 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 the post that goes out. 11, I go live. 12, I do this. And you still have to put yourself on some sort of expectation or we'll start blaming mm-hmm. and not taking yeah. ownership over the fact that our business isn't growing when yeah. it's really your fault. And SOPs are so simple. I work with entrepreneurs oftentimes and they get stuck like, man, I can do X, Y, and Z. But when it comes to these SOPs, I just don't know what to put in place. Every single one of us already have in built-in SOPs. And if you are married or you have a significant other or a parent, you already have SOPs for that person. You understand what those SOPs oh, are, right? For, sure. for example, if you go, if, if you go to a drive through and order something for your significant other. You know not to put the, hey, don't do this, don't do this, don't do that. If I go somewhere and order for Kenny, it's like no mayonnaise, no vinegar. Instead of the vinegar, can I have olive oil and lemon juice, please? Can the liquidy stuff not touch his meal? It needs to be on the side. I know these things. I know these things about him. So if I come home and his salad has oil and vinegar and not oil and lemon juice, I have to own that. It doesn't matter that I ordered it correctly. The part of the SOP that I missed was checking his food. What if the SOP, it's like a ghost SOP because from my... (laughs) I I brought that one up for you, Drake, because I know how you'd be mad about your food, girl. Yeah, yeah, she's like, yo, (laughs) the standard operating procedure is to check the bag for all the sauces. Period. Because she's saucy. But one of the SOPs is I have to think of the sauce that she forgot to ask me for. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> now you know I need A1. No, I 
I didn't know. I didn't know you needed How many meals <laughs> have you shared with Andrea? And you know, I'm, if she if she gets a burger, typically she wants ketchup. I'm if going she wants off the list. <clears throat> I understand. <laughs> and and y'all ever Okay, okay, yeah, it's whole a, conversation. It's okay. a whole conversation. It ain't just us. It's okay, it's normal. Yeah. Okay, good. So what I have learned to do in those instances is Make sure I have my sauces at home because Kenny is not a sauce person. So he will do everything in his power to not order. Oh, she didn't mention the sauce. I'm not getting I'm out of it. He doesn't want to smell it. He doesn't want to touch it. Like he sees sauce and it's like, ew, right? Like really sickens him. So I have my vinegar at home. I have my barbecue sauce, my ketchup. So if I forget to request it, because that's my fault, I don't have to get angry for you with you for forgetting to add it to the order. Mm. I have it at home. Own it. I love it. Can I, any, we got some full-time entrepreneurs here, right? What are some SOPs for your own business? Do you know? Do you have any in place? You have to come to the mic. Yeah, yeah, you've got to come to the mic. Anybody? No? We're right on topic with this. We're on point with this topic. We picked the right one. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, what what I've, uh, in kind of the way I approach (laughs) things is identifying what the goal is. Anybody got a big goal this year? What is it? Listen, as you know, I am in Nehemiah Davis's inner circle. I talk about him all the time. Last year, I had the biggest year financially based on his teachings. Actually, we just ran a play. He helped me make $70,000 in one day. Listen, what he's doing right now is an upcoming digital masterclass teaching exactly what he taught me to have a seven-figure year. I'm telling you, I owe a lot of my success to this man because he just understands marketing in a whole nother way. But what he's doing is offering the things that I he taught me to you for free. He's doing a digital masterclass that he's given to you for free at General Admission, 50% off the VIP. I suggest VIP. Um, because you, you get a lot more time with them and he really pours into the VIP. But if you just want to go to the class and you want to be a part of it, general admission free. A lot of y'all have been following him, waiting for him to open something up. He's giving it exclusively to the podcast listeners, 50% off. So don't tell nobody, okay? So listen, go to spmasterclass.com, free general admission, 50% off VIP. Do VIP though, okay? spmasterclass.com. Go get it. Let's have a big year this year. I'm sorry. It doesn't right sound Come here. believable. I know. Golly. It's, it's a million. It's I a million like to know. Dollars. What is the goal? Hey, everybody. Um, Introduce so, Name and IG. Hi, I'm Tanya Sanders Kelker. I am the beauty accountant on Instagram. Okay. And she wants to make a million dollars. Okay. Yeah. What, what was the goal? <laughs> All right. My goal is I want to have my first million dollar day. Mm. Day. Day. How do you plan on doing that? So I wrote down the goal. I wrote down the ways that I can make the million dollars. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I'm putting together a marketing plan to make that happen for me so it can be a constant thing in my mm, business. A million dollar day. What's the most you've made so far in a day? In a day, the most I've made was 150. 150? Mm-hmm. So you have made a million dollars in a year? Yes. Okay. So have you ever made a million in a month? No. <clears throat> Okay. That's the next goal. I want to make it in a day and then continually make it per month. That's a fact. Okay. A, what are some standard operating procedures in your business? Because operating at a level like that, there has to be some sort of operating procedures. Some standard operating procedures that I have in my business, I go and I make sure that the businesses that I run are following the SOPs that I put into place. And then when I look at that, I look at the SOPs, I'm always evaluating. Give me an example of an SOP in one of your businesses. Okay. So with, I have a couple day spas. So in the day spas, I go and look at my leadership team that are managing my day spas because I don't work in those day spas. So I look at what my leadership team is doing and make sure that they are Handling the day-to-day operations. What so are that I what are you measuring for? Okay, what I'm measuring for, I'm measuring making sure that the clients, the amount of clients that are coming in the door, making sure that they're being followed up with, making sure that the <laughs> back office work is being done during admin days. So what, what is their SOP for the follow-up? Um, the SOP for the follow-up is to do their duty, and then go back and evaluate at the end of the day because I have them go and decompress. I schedule out time in their day to decompress their job titles. So then when we actually have a meeting for the week, we'll be able to have intelligent conversations. I can evaluate 
if they're still a good fit for that role or if I need to move them in the business to another place. So you are obviously a talented and savvy entrepreneur, right? You have generated millions of dollars. Congratulations on that first and foremost. But I think that you could potentially be leaving money on the table yes. just by how you're communicating what your SOPs are, okay. right? Because I still don't know what because the SOP is. Because I still don't know what the SOP I can is. The and I don't know if it oh, okay. is the shock of being in front of that camera or you just mm-hmm. really don't know what your SOPs are because your SOP is not a day spa. What's one of the services that you offer? Waxing. Okay. The SOP isn't just wax your client and then go into the break room and just de- decompress. Right. How does your, t- from the moment they walk into that door to the moment that they leave out of that door, what are the exact procedures and workflows that make a thing happen? For example, when a customer, how do we greet customers? That's an SOP. Let's put an SOP in place for how we greet customers who walk into the salon. When you see a customer open that door, do we stand up? Do we sit down? Do we put our call on hold and immediately greet the customer? Does every customer have to be greeted within the first five seconds that they walk into the salon? Are we then coming out within the first two minutes with a bottle of water or a glass of champagne? Are we then escorting them back from the entry of the door? Do we walk over to them privately and ask them some questions about their appointment? Those are SOPs. So for that person who's at the front desk, How do we greet a client? Your SOP is everything from the time that they enter the door until they get handed off to their service provider or whoever is next. And then your SOP picks up with, once that's done, now how do we process the appointment? How do we check them in? How do we make sure their balance is paid? How do we make sure this is done? What emails do they need to receive after this appointment? Let's make sure those things. And then your SOP is post the service. Now that they've left the service, how do, you, how do you say farewell to the client? How do we say goodbye? Do we open the door for them? Do we not? Are we on our feet? Are we in our seat? If we're on a call, what do we do? Is there something that every single client has to receive? How do we do that? What is it? Where is it? Right. Those are SOPs. Right. Uh, think about, hey, y'all got a quick trip, right? Think of an SOP in quick trip. What do you, give me one. Welcome yeah, to quick trip. Quick trip. <laughs> no matter what that man at the front is doing, when you walk in the door... <laughs> That's not by, that's not like by happenstance. It's not because that person's having a good day saying, hey, how you doing? And do they ever whisper it? No. It's always a shout. Mm-hmm. So Absolutely. the SOP is likely as soon as someone steps two feet in that door, we shout. Welcome to Quick Trip. Yeah. We don't be like, welcome to Quick Trip. Keep it moving. It's eye contact. Welcome to Quick Trip. You go back to your customer. Yeah. When I was working at the Cheesecake Factory, it was it was the same thing every single day, every single time. Their SOP was, um, you greet them with your name, you tell them the fish of the day, the soup of the day, and you start with their drink order. Everybody does it the same exact way. And what they had was, um, it's called a cheesecake presentation, mm-hmm. right? So let's say you have a secret shopper and you don't come over to them with the cheesecake menu and suggest three cheesecakes, that takes points off of your secret shopper because that's a standard operating procedure. Every server needs to do the same exact thing every single time. So next time you go to, and sometimes they, they miss it, right? And it's all about the culture in that particular store or whatever. But like, just next time you go to Cheesecake Factory, wait for the presentation. If they don't, just say, yo, where's my presentation? Mm-hmm. They'll know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> you don't even gotta say cheesecake f- presentation, tell me about it. <laughs> just say, um, oh, this is the end of the meal. Where's my presentation? They'll know exactly what you're talking about because that is a standard operating procedure Mm -hmm. that's done in every single restaurant across the country. Yeah. Standard operating procedures will save your business and it will help you scale your business. Um, Right now, one of the industries that's killing it on SOPs are hairstylists, right? So you have someone, I literally just booked an appointment for a thousand dollar service in two or three weeks. And I've been trying to get this appointment for months. Hairstylist? Hair, hairstylist. You ain't got that much hair. A thousand dollars? A thousand dollars. I'm getting my micro links put back in and I've worn micro links forever and the ladies who do my micro links now are great. But it's the presentation of this one person that I've been trying to get in her seat for a couple of years. <clears throat> For the past couple of months, I've been really, really intentional about getting an appointment. I got an email this morning. An appointment is available. I took it, right? Dang, who is this person that's now, like so in demand? Yeah, she is really in demand. I'll pull her up on Instagram. She's really in demand. And 
What's interesting is um, when you book an appointment with her, you don't necessarily get to choose her. And so I looked at the appointment. What? Mm-hmm. I looked at the appointment and I said, um, do I still want the appointment? Because I just want her. So then I went back to her Instagram page and I see that she has these other stylists in the salon that are doing the same micro link service. And in most of her posts, it'll say, um, you know, like done the, the her way. Whatever her she method had, she is. She had a course. I don't think we can shout it out until we figure no, out No, 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 no. That's why I'm not saying her name yet, okay? <laughs> so it's, it's, stylist did, like, she shows, she demonstrates the service, and she's, like, done the, the her signature name way, right, is what she does. And so I went ahead and make the, made the appointment because I could see that every, I was like, every single stylist, they're all installing the same way. They all do that ponytail test the same way. Mm. They're all doing the shampoo process the same way. And so in the beauty industry specifically, um, that used to be a problem. You wouldn't make an appointment and pay any kind of money, $25 to $1,000, if it wasn't the stylist that you believed was going to get you the result. You didn't care about the cost. It was the result. But when you SOP, when you SOP in your spa, in a salon, in any business, it ensures that every team member is doing the same thing and giving every client the same result. You cannot pull your special shampoo out and use it on this client. That's outside of the SOP. You're fired. You cannot massage longer than the time period that we massage it because what you don't want is to create an environment where customers are now saying, oh, I don't want to work with him. I want to work with her instead when she's available. Well, she's not available for nine months. Okay, well, I'll just come back. I'll go to somebody else until she's available. We're losing money that way. Mm -hmm. So if we don't have SOPs, every customer is greeted the same way you go to Chick-fil-A, it's always my pleasure. Thank you for your order. Have a great day. Every single time. It's not, I'm not going to go to the Chick-fil-A on Northside Drive because they don't say my pleasure. I'm going to go all the way to the one on blah, blah, blah. Owners who understand and operators who understand SOPs understand that not having them costs them money. Let's simplify it to many of your businesses. Once you get a customer service representative, and I, I even had this problem in my own business that we've recently fixed, not making sure that everybody is responding to emails the same way. I don't want one person to get an email and they're like, oh, she was so pleasant, you know, because I get these side emails. They'll email me. Hey, Donnie, just letting you know, I love X, Y, and Z. Hey, I talked to this one person and she was so pleasant, really bubbly. I felt like I was building a relationship, but then just wanted to kind of let you know that your other person may need a little training because they were kind of dry and they, not my team. <laughs> okay. I get it. Or somebody takes longer to respond to something than, you know, and that's why I don't want emails because I'm going to take the longest to respond. That's a guarantee. Let me put a team of people in place and SOP it per the expectations that I have and then train and develop them. So in this season, we're really into training and developing and improving processes because I understand that even in my business, as wise as I am in business strategy, as dope as I may be as a coach, if SOPs are not in place to maintain things on the back end, I too will and have lost money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was our our morning meetup only grew when we started to implement some of those things. Like when you come on, it's the same. Like we started at seven forty five, and we'll do a book club conversation. Brenda's gonna wrap it up at eight ten. Uh, we're gonna do the announcements. We'll get the call started at eight fifteen, and then we're gonna close close the call at eight fifty five. Everybody knows exactly what they're supposed to be doing, and we can. And, and here's the thing. Let me just clear this up. This is hard. It's not easy. Because not only do you have to like, not only do you have to like implement the, put the system in place, you got to get humans to do it. And if, if you don't start at, what's really hard is doing things a certain way and then changing it and expecting the people that were doing things a certain way to do it the new way now. Mm -hmm. really challenging. Mm -hmm. So some of us are in the mud right now. Like we just, it's so lackadaisical, just haphazard. And then you want to start implementing SOPs and that's fine. But now you got to get the people to actually adhere to that thing too. Yes. It's not hard, but it does make a world of difference. Remember, y'all remember the movie Founder? Yes. McDonald's movie? Mm -hmm. What happened when there weren't any SOPs? When he's saying, yo, you want to open a McDonald's? Go for it. You want to open one too? Here's our system. This is a system in how we do things. 
but it wasn't standard operating procedures. Mm -hmm. You order this, you order this many fries when we get to this particular number. You serve burgers this way, fries this way. You say, do you want fries with that? When they started implementing, this is the only way we do things. Now we have McDonald's. Mm -hmm. So how many people just don't have any SOPs in your business? Just, okay, thanks for the honesty. Mm -hmm. You don't need, I'm going to say, why you raise your hands so late? Because <laughs> I'm going to do it if they do it. Oh, for sure, 100%. And here's the thing. <laughs> I don't have the tightest SOPs in my business either. But at least we know. We're, we're noticing that. them. Are we? We are. Okay. One of the SOPs for uh, podcasting is we try to get, we get here about 9.55. And then we, <laughs> we make sure the cameras are, you know, focused. 9.15. I get here about 9.30, typically. Say it again? Right? No, nah, but I'm saying, but the person is sitting here, when they get here, to <laughs> 9.55, and then we start at 10 o'clock, you know what I mean? But And typically we do. It, <clears throat> I didn't even say nothing. I'm just trying okay. to give the people the SOPs. You right. know what I mean? <laughs> that is the SOP. But let me say this. For those of you who don't have SOPs, you need to get them. If you can't, if you're not in a position where you get a coach or someone to consult and help you come in and get those SOPs, write them out as best as you can. What has to happen to get to the end result? Standardize them. Give them to the people who need to understand how that happens and anybody connected. And give your team grace. Handing someone an SOP, even reviewing it with them one time, is not enough to ensure that everybody gets on the same page and they're in alignment with the SOPs. Right. And so you can't get mad because you've been running your business without systems in place. And now suddenly you went to a David and Donnie podcast, Social Proof podcast, and now suddenly you got this itch to do an SOP, you and your phone doing them right now. <laughs> and now you're like, y'all, things are different. They're changed right now. You can't expect you can expect, but you'll be disappointed in thinking that people are automatically going to adhere. So now you have to treat everybody as new hires and you have to implement your training policy. How long would it have taken you if you replaced the whole team? How long is it going to take me to instill this training in? OK, maybe it's two weeks, maybe it's 30 days. Now you have to double that time because these are not new hires. These are existing employees with existing habits of how they operate your business. So you got to do two things. You've got to break the habit and then train and develop the new one. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. This this has really been a game changer. But outside of like our business and hiring employees, I think one thing we really need to consider is what is our SOPs? Mm -hmm. So what I was... What I was doing, like with our book club, what I would try to do is you have to, like we read. We read a book, we'll read a, we'll read a chapter, and then the next morning we discuss it. And my race was, all right, when am I going to find time to read it? And there wasn't like a standard thing. Everything started to change for me when I decided I'm going to read at the same time every single day. So I wake up at 6.30 and my wife's here to tell you, she's like, I'm not just saying it to sound cool. I wake up at 6.30 every day. I get up, I go in the next room, I read, and then I start preparing for the day. I read, and we read 14 books last year doing that because I, I, I had to set up some sort of system, some sort of implementation process for myself to be more productive. If there's a big project, I know one thing I have to do is I just got to schedule time out. So tomorrow, I'm going through like the whole Mighty, ne Mighty Networks thing. Mm -hmm. If I'm just like going about my day and trying to figure out when I can have time to do something, it's never going to be done for me. So I, big projects, I know I'm going to schedule out two hours or so. Or, and this is something I'm working on, I'm getting better at, I don't get it right. But when there's something that I have to do, the standard operating procedure should be Let's go straight to the calendar and implement it. Or my last thing and what I've been doing, which is kind of selfish because I put it on the person, is send me a calendar invite. If you want me to do something, send me a calendar invite. Now, if I don't tell the person to send me a calendar invite and I don't put it on the calendar myself, then I'm, I'm going to keep missing appointments. We just missed one, mm -hmm. right? I double booked for something because mm. the SOP mm. kicked in the wrong time. For the studio audience, you know I'm, mm, 
because he doesn't mess up on time. He's never late. I didn't he never, say, I didn't you say know what? that. David is never late. He will just cancel the whole appointment. Oh, sis, I'm not available. Days in advance, though. It doesn't matter. I'm not, I'm we not had a late guy. days in advance. Yes, yeah, but no, but here's the thing. So this is when it failed. Right? I'm not. I'm not perfect. <laughs> Um, he's not late because he just won't come but she, she said, <laughs> <laughs> but she said we're going to do a photo shoot on Friday and she said it I'm like okay cool number one I missed that I missed the SOP the standard the way I'm supposed to operate I missed it and then my wife said something and she said hey I need to get my hair done on Friday and I need you to watch the ride and I was right there saying listen I know, I know how important this is 100% I said, let me do it right now. So I put that on the calendar. When we came back to talk about the photo shoot, I'm like, ah, I can't. Something on my calendar. So the SOP worked the second time, but I didn't do it the first time. And I'm, I'm working to get better at it. So like your, to your point, when you go to your team and say, all right, these are the standard operating procedures. You have to expect that it's not going to be followed. I'm not even following it myself 100%. So I, but, but I am getting a lot better than I used to because I would just try to remember and I would text it to myself. For the it's record, true. David dealt with my tardiness for a few months. I have been trying to encourage. Oh, I have been trying to encourage David's calendar behavior mm -hmm. for about two years. I want to invite you to pick my brain. Mine too. Mine too. Your too. Mine too. Your too. Okay, you guys. Brain. We are so excited because we just dropped our newest podcast series called the Brain Picker Podcast. David. Oh, it's going down. You get to pick our brain. You have a business idea, a concept. You're stuck. You can't get off the ground. You need the advice of seasoned, experienced entrepreneurs. Not only entrepreneurs that are practitioners, but we got a lot of people that we've been coaching all over the last decade. All over the globe. They got receipts. Not just that. You never know where your next investor might be hanging out and the word on the street is we got all the connections. That's a big fact. We got all the connections. So if you want to sit down with us and pick our brains. In front of our audience. And we're letting you pick our brains. We won't even talk bad about you for doing it in front of our audience, bringing your business maximum exposure. Find the link somewhere around here, wherever you see it. It's there. And apply. Right now. To pick our brain. Let's go. Let's go. Let's get it. Let's get it. <laughs> Donnie, all right. So, all right. You want to you do it now? You want to do it now? Anyway, let's get back to entrepreneurship. For about okay. two years. I'm just putting that out there, okay? Yeah, and I'm progressive. I'm getting better. I'm getting better. Am I? Right? Joe, how are SOPs? Our podcast, and people ask about, I am really proud of how our podcast operates because that joint be clicking. I mean, for the most part. Say the podcast be what? The podcast, like how we produce the podcast, when it goes out, all that kind of stuff. What are you thinking? Is, no? SOP is trash? No, I think we got a pretty clear SOP because like the team who produces the podcast pretty much puts it out on a regular basis. If anything happens or miss, like any mishaps, like we're on it. Like this weekend, we had a small mishap, but I was on it. I didn't have to contact you. Like, yo, Dave, this is the issue. It's like, I'm learning to take ownership over this whole podcast stuff. So it's like, your leadership and Donnie's leadership has been like trickling down on me. Like, you'll just take ownership and take care of it. So I'm reaching out to the guests. I'm like, yo, I need this. I need this. I'm reaching out a week in advance now instead of like, you know, the day before, like we were once upon a time to like make sure, yo, we need your um, your affiliate link. We need to make sure that your account, you know, everything that you were supposed to have for this podcast, we need a week in advance to make sure that it, it flows. So we don't run into an issue where the day before, oh, my, my um, website's not up. And it's like, we got to scramble again to find True. another, uh, <laughs> another episode of push in there. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm going to have to argue against that just a little bit. I think That's we still it. need to tighten up on SOPs, right? So let me say this. I almost guarantee that Joe's SOPs are not documented, written, or video. Ding I don't agree. <clears throat> <laughs> I don't agree. Ding I dong. Think... He said, yes, right? They're not. Okay, let me I tell think... you why it's more of a... It's, it's not a standard operating procedure yet. Right. Because it hasn't been documented. So if something happens to Joe today, tomorrow... Nobody can pick up something and know exactly every single step Joe does to make his job happen. Well, wait. Yes. It actually is documented. Where? Right here in this Google Doc. Right here. Boom. Tell so, me about it. So we have, um, everyone has their own actual uh, 
job SOP. Job SOP. Not, not a full SOP, but everyone has their own tab in this uh, Excel document. Mm -hmm. So Mark has one for any, like, any mistakes I make behind his board. Mark has one that he can clean it up. Donald has one for all the titles. I have one for pretty much the whole process of from the guest all the way down to what advertisement needs to go okay, into what question. slot. question. When you, if, let's say you couldn't be here, something happened, mm -hmm. and we had to go on Fiverr and bring somebody in to come and do this, right? Mm -hmm. Is there something that you can leave them on that Google Doc that says, unlock the door, block off Donnie's space if there's going to be a, a crowd, start the timer, make sure this camera is at this angle or this direction and this distance away, make sure that display is always facing so the co-host can see themselves, make sure these lights are at this position. There's nothing Correct. like that. I know there's nothing like that, but we're gonna we're gonna make sure that happens, Absolutely. right? Now, let's stop coming at my team. First off, the other thing is I booked guests for the show that had no idea where to go. Mm. They were never communicated with Ooh. about heart zogs. Mm. They had no idea. They didn't have an address. They didn't get any kind of confirmation of a time. I did those things manually. Why? Because there's no SOP in place. So those are things that I'm going to help out with. I've, I'm, I'm already on it. So I'm just saying, again, and, and there's loopholes in everybody's business, 100%. not just this, right? But I'm highlighting that we can get tighter even on that. These people who are here are from your community. Sometimes there are people here from within my community. Some of them are. How do we know they're active? We don't have an SOP in place for that. There should be something that says, you have to register. Maybe they come in with a digital ticket or we have somebody at the door making sure that we have active members here because this is a benefit for our active members, right. not people who were members way back when. So we just have to look at all these things and make sure that we are running our business the way, and I'm guilty too, yeah. but we're talking about it. So I want to talk about it and make it, make it right. Your SOPs are not SOPs unless they're documented, how to do a thing. We talked about the quick trip. It's not just an SOP for how they greet you, but how does a customer get gas? How do, what's your SOP for getting gas? My SOP is find the gas station, park my vehicle so that the right side of the vehicle aligns with the gas pump, turn my vehicle off, get out of the car, go around the car to the gas pump, see if they have paper towels. If they have paper towels, proceed to grab those paper towels. I forgot a step. Before I got out of the car, I forgot to get my credit card. <laughs> these are SOPs. So if you have a child who's 15 and about to be 16 and they need to get gas and for whatever reason, you're not there to teach them or they just don't know, they have an issue or whatever, you can say, here's how you get gas. Mm. Instead of saying, oh, you go, because somebody else would have just pulled up to the gas pump, didn't realize that their gas hand was on, or their gas pump was on the left side, not the right side. We need to know that. Have you ever been in a rental car and you pulled up to the pump and it was on the wrong side? You, you pulled up on the wrong side. Have you ever gotten out of your car and forgot forgot your card? Mm -hmm. All of these things are SOPs from how to pump gas to how to cook the burger to how to make a peanut butter sandwich to how to get from my car, from my from my house to the garage. Yeah. Anybody got any SOPs for their relationship? Yes. No, nah, really. Like if it's going to be like I, my wife is really getting a handle on that in terms of all right, well, you know, she said it this week, like, oh, man, I'm really proud of myself. I, you know, had dinner ready by 5 o'clock or so, 6 o'clock, right? Something like that, Dre? Is she still her? Yeah, something like that. It was like 5 or 6 o'clock. What time were you trying to have... You did really good this past week. Was it this week? It was like some SLP. All right, come to the mic real quick because they've never seen you before. Yes, Dre. Oh, come, come on. on. No. You look come great. On. Come on, come on. Give my wife a round of applause. That's my baby. So we're talking about like SOPs and standard operating procedures, right? So <laughs> you were like, like perfecting your system of uh, dinner by this time, you know, bed by this time. So what are some of those things that you're looking to implement? Yeah, so um, Corey gets home at a certain time. Well, I'll start from the beginning. Um, David wakes up, Corey wakes up, the baby's up. I try to have breakfast cooked. By a certain time. Yeah, because that SOP ain't really hit just yet all the time. <laughs> well, the breakfast joint. You're doing good, though. You're doing good. good. Yeah, I yo, did good. Hey, don't do my system like that. <laughs> I don't even wake up early, so I did good last week. For sure. Absolutely. I cooked a hot meal for five days straight. Um, but no, dinner. The goal is to have dinner cooked by five o'clock. So 
five o'clock, Corey's home. Davis pretty much done through Fritz throughout his day. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm winding she down to get yeah. the ride yeah. to her daddy by five o'clock. So the goal really is five o'clock, dinner done the night before, taking dinner out. Mm-hmm. So preparing my mind to what I'm going to cook for the next day and then trying to get in bed by 11. Mm-hmm. Sure. So these these are also, thank you so much. Get around for us. <laughs> These are also um, SOPs. Like, th- I think we all need to have, like, s- expectations of what's supposed to be done yeah. in our household, our relationship, whether, like, from the very beginning, and we would probably be better at this if we started in the very beginning of our relationship where we said, all right, what we're going to do is we're going to have date night every Thursday. Yep. That is a standard operating for- procedure for dealing with me. If you're going to set that up, set that um, up front. So it's harder now for our daughter, Corey, to wash the dishes, um, clean her room, things of that nature, because she's 11 now. And now we're trying to implement SOBs. But for Sarai, as you know, she's growing, if we can just kind of start implementing smaller, yeah, this is what you do. before When you get out of your bed, I'm talking about I don't know what time when they're gonna start sleeping in her own bed because she ain't. <laughs> I don't know three o'clock or four o'clock. I mean four 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 years old or whatever. And you say, all right, when you get out of your bed, what do you do, baby? Get out of your bed, fix the bed. And it might not be a good fix. It might not be like you know picture perfect like a cleaner came in. But if we can teach her like what the the, the first thing you do when you get out of your bed is you straighten the sheets. It might look bad, but imagine what happens when she's eight. Mm-hmm. And then nine, and then eleven, mm-hmm. and then all. Then it sticks with them for longer. You feel me? So, but again, none of this stuff is easy. But I think the first, I got a formula. You want to give a formula? I do. But before we get to the formula, mm-hmm. because it may need to include this, when you are creating your SOP, give me that bag. I need to write down my formula. This is good. our formula. <clears throat> <laughs> When you are creating your SOPs and when you are communicating your SOPs, it's also very important for you to think through what goes wrong or what other areas are affected if we don't follow this SOP. And it helps your team member or your significant other understand like, man, if Andre's role, well, not role, but with you created with the SOP, I think dinner by five. So if you communicate to David, David, Dinner will be ready by five. That's the SOP that I put in place for our family. So you don't have to worry about it. You just be home by 450, get washed up and be ready for dinner. And then David comes home from a long day. He's working, but Dre said the dinner is going to be ready at five o'clock. And you and Sarai are napping at five o'clock. Nothing has been unthawed. And David gets home. He's hungry. Now what happens is there's frustration that's going to be built up. Now... Somebody, more than likely David, is going to have to go out and get food for the family. Now he's going to order this uh, meal in angrily and in haste. So guess what he's going to forget? Your sauce. <laughs> and then he's going to come home with this food. He's going to, food's on the table. Y'all are probably eating with a little bit of begrudgment, right? And it's just going to create a problem. So to prevent that, the SOP is, if dinner, for whatever reason, isn't going to be ready at five o'clock, because I understand that these departments, meaning David and the kids, are depending on this SOP, what is my SOP if I don't get this done? Oh, man, dinner isn't going to be ready at five. I knew that dinner wasn't going to be ready at five. Let me make sure I give everybody a heads up. I like it. Let's give a round of applause as I figure out how to spell this word. What word are you looking for? Analysis. Potential? Analysis. Let's find it out right. together real quick. Right. Uh, <laughs> All right. Now, so here's the thing. I think I, I think I got a formula. I think I got a formula. Uh, spell it for me. Let I me got it. it. A-N-A-L-Y-S-I-S. And I didn't even need the... Um, you used the little, little thing. I didn't. I didn't. You're a hater. All right. <laughs> so am. y'all ready? Y'all taking notes in your phone? Y'all ready? Okay. So implementing SOPs. One is awareness. Would you agree? We've got to be aware that one, the uh, there are no SOPs. Or start to be like, you know, we'll, we'll, um, we'll implement some of the SOPs and we'll like outline it and just realize, uh, uh, you know, kind of j- just being aware that they're not being followed, 
right? I just, I know now that I need to implement some SOPs, right? We all know that now, right? So awareness, and I'm trying to go all A's, and this is a freestyle. This is good. Uh, next is ability. Are you able to implement these SOPs? Ability. And I'm actually going to follow this as well. Like, I, I know what needs to be done. I'll probably create a little list of, you know, standard operating procedures. And then we have to check our ability to implement them. Because sometimes you do too many and you don't have the ability to carry any of them out. And if you try, if you do half of them or a few of them, it crashes the whole system. Is that right, Diamond? Mm-hmm. Okay. So this is ability is where you're looking for your who. Yes. Right? You're probably not able, but somebody is. Who is capable? Did you call me incapable? Just now on the low? Anyway. I did not. Okay, anyway. hater. Who are you here to see? <laughs> number. <laughs> all right. So number three is the activity. Actually implementing the SOPs. You're going to get it wrong. It's not going to work. You're going to miss some. So I, I think I got to take accountability for even this Patreon thing, right? Because I put it on Joe, but if it's if I'm not super intentional about implementing the system and I only talk about it every now and again, it's the same thing as me telling my daughter to wash the dishes on Thursday and I don't remind her next Thursday and the next Thursday I do them and then I get bad at her and say, why aren't you doing it? You know, what day are you supposed to do dishes? It says Thursday, but I haven't been intentional. It's, it's still your fault, but I'm just trying to just take some, some onus on this. Well, it's your fault because you put the wrong person in the seat. Don't come at Joe. He's the right person. No, it's not. Joe is skilled at That's what true. Joe is skilled in. Obviously, this admin stuff with Patreon is not his jam. That's true. So he's, in terms he's of trying to develop you to be something that you're not naturally amazing at. So what has to happen now is if he insists on you being in this seat, he has to give you the grace to grow into that seat. And the only reason you accepted the seat was because there was an equitable position attached to it. And that's also a problem. Absolutely. Not saying yes to everything when you're not qualified to do it just to try to make money because what's going to end up happening is you're going to blow it and you ain't going to make no money. Am I right? You well, ain't making no money anyway. <laughs> and said, now you look bad. I, you do about, what, 700 a month or so? That ain't what he thought he was making. But Yeah, no, no, no. So, But we, <laughs> we talked about it, right? We talked about it because we set like certain expectations, which were past the deadline, right? And we didn't hit that joint. So what's what's pro and this is what I said. This is what I said up front. I said, well, if we don't hit our goal by this particular date, it's not just taking it away. It's I'm going to give you a certain amount of money to manage it, to carry out the SOPs, which might work out better that way anyway, because he doesn't have the pressure of thinking of having a marketing mind or... Um, a vision on how all these systems are going to work, he could just say, what, what Joe is amazing at is I'll throw out an idea or a concept and he has the ability to see how to carry it out. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily being focused on the growth of it or right. like the systems of it. So I'm like, well, one thing he should probably negotiate is say, I will manage it and carry out what you need done but when we hit certain, when you hit certain marks, I make more money because you get to do what you do in terms of marketing promotion. I'll do what I do in terms of facilitation, which maybe it doesn't pay as much as it could, but you'll be happier and make more money. So, so maybe like implement, cool. create a bonus stru structure and present it. Mm. And then in thinking through that bonus structure, if now someone else is going to have to be in that role, you got to take into consideration their compensation for the role too. And it fact. has to make sense. All right. Number four, analysis. We've got to continue to check to see if it's working. We've got to analyze the process to see if it's working, see if there's anything we need to tweak. So we could say, well, we're going to have a date night every Friday. 
And but you got to look at even if you implement that and you have it, is the relationship getting better? Because maybe, just maybe, we're carrying out the SOP, but the things that I'm choosing to do isn't considering if my spouse likes to do them. Mm. We got to analyze it. We got to see, right? And trust me, y'all, I'm I'm not pointing a finger at anybody. See how like Donnie can tell me what's wrong with my SOPs. And I know that, right? But it, at least we've gone through the process of like being aware, and, you know, being aware and knowing that we are capable of doing certain things. And there are certain SOPs that I had to take out because that's the bottleneck. The fact that this has to be done is tripping up, tripping up the whole organization. Yeah. But that's going to come from doing the thing, the activity, and then analyzing whether this is working or not. Yes? Yeah. I want to go back and audit my own SOPs. Mm. Audit could be in there. Audit could be analysis. I saw that you... Well, auditing and analysis are not the same thing. So I mean, you analyze. Yes, it is. Kind yeah. of, it's not the same thing. Well, of not course, the way but... that you intend it to be. So here, analysis is you measuring for performance. For sure. Auditing is going through and making sure these are still relevant to the business. Period. Yes, and then my last one is accountability. That has to be some sort of accountability mm-hmm. on how it's how it's being carried out. Certain metrics. In in terms of um, what is what are the consequences or the rewards of this being carried out? Because if you come, if you this is what I know for sure. If you come into your company and say, "All right, these are SOPs for tomorrow. Now, from here on, we're going to do it this way." If the people feel like the job is getting harder and there's no reward, why are they going to do anything? Why are they going to mix? Why are they going to change it? They're not like super gung ho. But if you say, yo, we put out this SOP. Now, Joe, when we, every episode that comes out Monday, we need to put it out Thursday. This is going to help it grow. And if this grows, there's some sort of reward attached to that. We'll make sure they get done. We have to have some sort of accountability. Um, amongst the organization, I think that's important that everybody maybe doesn't have, um, you know, a super detailed, clear picture on what the SOPs are. But sometimes if someone else's job is linked to your job, that holds you accountable to getting it done, right? So you got to get certain things done, but it's relying on Mark. So you got to keep saying, yo, Mark, I need this. I need this. I need this. Now he's feeling the accountability from you. He's feeling it from me. And we'll get it done, but you're only holding him accountable because that's a step in your particular job and your process. And you holding him accountable makes him more productive because he's got to get his thing done. So I think that's really good. Don't go on your calls teaching my stuff. You know what I mean? Because that was all me. First of all, that was all me. I taught this man everything. And don't act like you haven't done it. Don't act like you ain't doing it before. (laughs) She be taking all my good stuff. This entire, I'm gonna do this, team. this entire formula is based on everything that we just discussed That's true. today. That's true. That's true. <laughs> cannot. Right, take credit. I cannot. But go ahead yeah. and package it up as, you know, let's put it in a course. That could definitely go in a course. We can definitely. That's a fact. That's a fact. All right, cool. That's a whole um, master class. Any questions? Listen, if I was going to teach you how to make a million dollars, would you give me 10000 Like if I had a course teach you how to make a million dollars and you're positive, you're going to make a million dollars. Would you give me 10000 Of course you would. It's no-brainer, right? So in a calendar year, we make seven figures with the podcast. But there's 21 things that I extracted from that that you're going to need to launch a podcast. But I only got time to give you three right now. One is you need a distribution platform. The distribution platform is what you upload your podcast to. That platform sends it to Spotify, Apple, Google Play, so that your supporters can actually listen to your podcast. You're also going to need a microphone. You need a really good microphone so it's crispy audio. And three, you need an income strategy. This is not necessarily a hobby, unless you're going to make it a hobby. But I can teach you how I made the seven figures with these 21 things. Now, the good news is you don't have to give me 10000 My ebook is only 37 bucks. okay? So listen, go to podcastebook.com and get the 21 things that you need. And I, I can explain it in detail, all the things that you need, okay? Podcastebook.com. Let's get to the episode. Yes, man. I am Chef Beasley. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what me and my wife and my team did on Monday, we had to get the systems in place for the meal prep. And so what I decided to do, I said, you know what? 
I'm not good at writing stuff down. You know, your boy got a little ADHD. I said, so I want y'all to record everything I do from start to finish. Mm -hmm. So they got in the car, went to the grocery store. My wife was recording. And my cousin, she was writing everything that I picked up, every item, and she was writing it down. She was putting it in an Excel spreadsheet. When we got back to the house, they're recording. They recorded how I put the groceries up. It was recording how I was washing the vegetables, uh, prepping the food. Literally just every single step mm-hmm. that we were doing, they were just recording. And my cousin just writing everything down. Uh, even how we packaged the boxes, how we load the car, uh, how we travel. They recorded. It was a, it was an all-day process, but yeah. the camera never stopped rolling. And uh, at the end of the night, I told my wife, I said, all right, now you hire somebody to put this video in a step-by-step so we can pass this meal prep operation over to someone else. Absolutely. And then, you know, we got the systems in place. Because like I said, I don't write nothing down. So I was just like, let me simplify it. Yeah. I was just like, just record me. You know what I mean? So that whole day nice. recorded, wrote stuff down. So they got a week to get the whole system in order. And um, I just kept it simple. So just keep it simple. Yeah. You know I mean? As a chef, too, like you really, if you're going to grow your business, you really, really got to lock into this. Exactly. Because you can't say, all right, you need a little bit of salt. You need a little bit of sugar. <laughs> and sometimes you do things in the wrong order. It doesn't yep. come out. Some people are more heavy handed. Yep. Yep. So you I feel had, me? So, yeah, that that's super. Everything. Yeah. I had to record everything, how I wash my hands, how I talk to the client when I'm dropping the food off, looking to hire some delivery drivers. So I say I need all of this stuff in place. You know what I mean? Because I got some, I got some pretty dope clients. I don't, I don't want just anybody dropping their food off. So everything. They Who's your dopest post- client, though? If you had to pick one. Uh, <laughs> 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 uh Donnie. <laughs> ah man, don't touch me. <laughs> you know I got love for both of them. But yeah, I just had to put it in order because I'm just like in order for us to really grow what we're doing this year, we gotta get these systems in place. For Last sure. year it was just me. That's but mm-hmm. now I just say, you know what, just just record me and y'all just do y'all thing. Cause I don't want to do that SOP stuff. Y'all do that yep. and everything. So that definitely helps, even with the podcast. Just record everything you do and just have somebody do it step by step. Guy, you be good. Yep. Pictures yep. and video take uh, word typed out SOPs to the next level. Mm-hmm. So imagine trying to type all of this out 50 feet, this angle, blah, 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 blah. And you still do it because people learn differently. So you want to be prepared for how anybody learns. But I believe in creating a written SOP with a video follow-up because imagine the difference between some person coming in and do this technically and then they have a picture at the end or a video like this is what it should look like. Oh, okay. So now I get it when he means put this, this, and that, that, and the wire's not crossing. We can tighten that up a little bit. But, you know... (laughs) Video and picture. Add that to your SOPs. Good. All right. Uh, anybody questions, comments, concerns? King Energy, what's up? Spiritual healer. Um, no question. It just made me realize how much money I'm losing. Facts. With the follow-up, with not having SOPs. Mm-hmm. Yep. So... Yeah, Listen about to go do some work. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. About the follow-up with all the clients that I help, and it's no follow-up. It may yeah. be a week later, whatever, I'm free. And then I go out and follow up, but it should be something. As soon Same as they it. leave, it should be something hitting their email or me reaching out. So Yeah, right, and automate so. as much of these SOPs as possible. But even your automations need to be documented SOPs. Because you could run into a situation where the automation stops working. I ran into a situation maybe two weeks ago where... Uh, my Zapier account stopped triggering for whatever reason they were going through whatever. And when people were purchasing the course, they weren't immediately, typically you purchase the course, you make your payment, you automatically get access to your program. Mm -hmm. Well, the automation stopped triggering and my team is like, hey, such and such is saying they didn't get it. Okay, one time I'll go in there and fix it. But after two, something is wrong. I go and check and I see that the automation didn't trigger. Well, I'm traveling and I don't have time to fix it on the beaches of the world, but there's an SOP for my next in line to go in there and figure it out. Instead of it being a situation where I have nothing documented because the automation is supposed to handle that. Well, what happens if the automation fails? How does the job still get done? Thanks. There it is. (laughs) (laughs) 
with uh, She Finds Success. And this is just really great information because I think, like you said, the first thing is awareness. We have SOPs, even in our relationship, we don't identify them as SOPs, but it starts from your family, providing them that language and then providing them the information that goes with that language. There's an SOP for everything. Everything. Just like you said, the things that you do every day. Every Friday, I get my hair done at 10 o'clock. That's my SOP. Mm -hmm. Our relationship, every Friday, we have a date night. Those are things that we do in our business, but identifying those, making it visual, and putting them in paper. So thank you for that, because now we need to go home and strategize on some Uh, things like uh, SOP. And then, two, I raised my hand on not having SOPs because I just signed up for your uh, six-figure accelerated class course and I realized that (laughs) my SOPs are not what it should be Mm -hmm. so I am re you know visiting the entire process of my business and making sure there's a process for everything Mm -hmm. it didn't matter who it is just like you said if you open that door someone comes in the two seconds the five seconds what is the SOP Mm -hmm. so thank you for the conversation (laughs) and you know the best time to develop your SOPs as you're doing the job right Mm -hmm. so Two things very important. Number one, anytime you're about to do the job. So if you're about to go in and respond to a customer service email, you know what? Let me do a Loom video real quick and show them how I respond. Where I where am I where am I looking? What kind of language am I using? And then even for emails, like let me go ahead and I'm responding to a billing inquiry or something happened. Let me go ahead and screenshot this language or copy and paste this language into the billing email response SOP. So they see this is how we respond to it. That's one of the best times to create the SOP. As you have things come up, it makes it easy and less pressure. It doesn't feel so formal. And then you always want to have an SOP or the SOPs laid out and created before you hire someone else. So if you're like on the fence and you're about to hire an assistant, I urge you to just like wait. Get the SOPs in place first for as much as you can. Other things are like all of my job descriptions in their duties that they sign off on in the HR platform. Mm -hmm. You got one of those? In the HR platform, when they sign off on their handbooks and their job descriptions, it also says that this role is ever evolving and developing. So new SOPs and new requirements may become available over time. Good, good. But I do want, uh, I don't want you guys to be like afraid of entrepreneurship Mm -mm. or to even feel overwhelmed. Because we do really good and half our stuff ain't... Ain't in place. <laughs> I wasn't going to say that. Yes, you were. I wasn't going to say <laughs> as tight as they could be. <laughs> Golly. Y'all, listen. We are out here killing it. And we got some super bootleg stuff happening behind the scenes, too. Mm-hmm. We just being totally real. And and a lot of that is because we were solo... Pre- I know I was a solopreneur for a long time. Like, until recently. Like, for real, for real, last year. And you weren't necessarily always a solopreneur, but you had a lot of people working with you for free. And there's damage in that too, Mm -hmm. right? You gotta gotta get the right. Having a whole lot of free help doesn't mean that you have the right help because you got a lot of volunteers who just want to be down, right? It comes with its own struggle. So we are still growing and developing. And for anybody who may have come across our paths that we didn't get it right with, we're sorry, we're getting better. We're growing too. (laughs) We're sorry. We're getting better and we're growing too. Um, But your heart, like I can tell people, I can tell you all day that my heart really went into Six Figure Accelerator. But if you get in there and my heart doesn't translate into that program, you don't care. Right. So your job as a CEO, that heart and that passion, that drive that you have behind creating and developing, it needs to be seen inside of the SOPs so that to your clients and customers, it's seen in their result. I'm going home and I'm working on some stuff. Oh, you and I both. Mm. So um, anybody else? Y'all good? Questions, comments? Y'all straight? Y'all all right? Okay, good, good. All right, well, um, let's wrap this thing up, man. Um, this episode is sponsored by The Morning Meetup, themorningmeetup.com, the only organization that gathers every single day, Monday through Friday, to build a group of entrepreneurs that can grow together, learn together, make money together, shop with each other, and support each other. And uh, this is exactly what we're doing. Um, between six and 700 people are joining the call every single morning. This isn't webinar mode where you only see me speaking. You get to see everybody. Everybody gets to talk in terms of our book club, question and answer, things of that nature. It's a phenomenal community. And uh, we, uh, we, we have gatherings, right? So this you know, 
this is coming up. I don't know when you're watching this, but we're having a conference where everybody just everybody's in the morning meetup just to get to come. They don't have to buy any tickets. And in fact, you can't buy tickets to the event. This is like invite only, family only, community only. Okay. So um, go to themorningmeetup.com. You can try out our trial just for a dollar. Um, if you like it for seven days, if you don't like it, you can leave. It's cool. But if you do like it, $79 a month, you get to be a part of this phenomenal organization that gathers every single day. Okay. So go to themorningmeetup.com. Yeah. This episode is also brought to you by Post to Paid. Post to Paid is a full service community that we've created to service entrepreneurs who are really dope at what they do, specifically in service-based industries, but you struggle to connect and convert and engage with your audience online. You are struggling to pull people in off of the internet. You're struggling to garner the interest in attracting the right customer to you. Um, I have eliminated that overwhelm by sending you three text messages every single day of exactly what you should be posting on social media. And it's a range of entertaining posts, educational posts, informational posts, testimonials, all kinds of things, you name it, because there is a formula to posting content that converts. You're not just selling on the internet. So if you want to be able to do that without the overwhelm, come on in and join Post to Pay. It is $1 for your first seven days to come in and try it out. If you love it, after that, it's just $37 a month. And you can join Post to Pay by texting the words POST to PAID to 404-737-2767. And this episode is also brought to you by Six Figure Accelerator, where we train and develop coaches and consultants from scratch. So you have some information inside of you. You want to teach somebody something. You're really good at something. You're the plug. You're the go-to. Somebody's always asking you for something and you want to turn that into a business and make money. Or you already have a program that's not quite connecting and you want to uh, rebuild that and develop it from scratch. Six Figure Accelerator is exactly what you need. And you can see if we're a good fit uh, to work together there by going to six figure s i x figure e d u dot com, and we're leaving it there. This conversation was so important today. Thanks. SOPs, we need them not just in our business. And the good news is, or the real news is, wherever you are in your business, it requires an SOP. As a solopreneur, as a CEO, and a leader of thousands, it doesn't matter. You need them. As a single person, as a person in a relationship, you need them. As the person who maybe assists, you know, in the background with podcasting and your job is like to make sure the guests have their water of choice and, you know, things like that, um, you need them. Uh, Did you get your water of choice today? I, I didn't. And, you know, I'm starting to get, I can feel that tingle. Like I have my own water that I brought, but when I do a lot of talking, there's a certain water that I like to drink because of the tingle. <laughs> you want some, I got you some water. First of all, no. Joe, I, he put the water here. I didn't even, that's, that's a part of the SOP. water that. Water is water. No, that's not the water that I drink. Joe knows exactly. And anyway, so. Whatever role you're playing, right, just make sure you're not the reason, not following the SOP is the reason that the person depending on you has a tickle in their throat. You eat church's chicken. You got some nerve to talk about this water? All right, cool, man. We are out of here. Make sure y'all subscribe to the channel. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Please share it, all right? We're out of here. Peace. Bye-bye. You are talented, but the biggest problem you have is you do not have a community. If you take your talents and put it in the right community, it will grow. It's like you have a really special seed. If you put it in the right environment, the right soil, it grows. When it's in the wrong soil, it just doesn't grow. You are a very special seed, but you're just in the wrong soil. You're around the wrong people. Do you know at The Morning Meetup, themorningmeetup.com, there's five to 700 entrepreneurs that gather every single day. The ground is fertile. I'm teaching entrepreneurship from very basic practical steps on how to grow your business. Inside the morning meetup, we've had multiple people. I've helped dozens of people quit their job. First off, I'm the best coach in the world. So I want you to join the community. Not for me, though. Even though I'm going to give you some really good information, I want you to be around this environment of other people that are winning, okay? So go to themorningmeetup.com and just do the dollar trial. If you like it, you can stay. It's only $79 a month. I just want you to taste test it. But if you don't, if you do taste test it, you're like, oh, I don't like this. I don't like David. I don't like the way he looks. It's too early in the morning. It's actually 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can just leave. No obligations. It's all good. Nobody's going to chase you down. Okay? So go to themorningmeetup.com. This is exactly what you've been looking for.